tear down and rebuild. That's how one family solved its housing dilemma. Hi, I'm Scott Morgan. Welcome to Dream Builders. From a single-story rambler to a two-story stone masterpiece, today we'll see how a Maryland couple started all over again on the same site. Then we traveled to Aspen, Colorado, where an architect overlooked the obvious to create a cool contemporary, and in California, the proof is on the roof. We'll meet a man who turns shingles into art. But we begin with a pair of hands-on homeowners who are building their dream home here in Bethesda, Maryland. Bob Barish and his wife Barbara Brown never considered leaving their neighborhood in Bethesda, Maryland. But they did envision living in a home that was more spacious, elegant, and original. We'd been living here for about 12 or 13 years. We loved the neighborhood, but we wanted to change the house. It was a one-story 50s, classic 50s rambler. So we started talking to architects, and it became obvious that, that just putting a second story on that house was never going to happen. Instead, Bob and Barbara decided to tear down their existing home and build a new one using the same foundation. That meant pulling the house apart by hand. Barb and Barbara enlisted the help of builder Gabe Nasser. We couldn't just get a um, you know, bulldozer in here and bulldoze it because we had to keep the foundation. And in fact, we kept some of the uh, floor framing on the first floor. So we actually took the house apart by hand. It took 10 days to tear down the old house and 32 dumpsters to haul it away. The teardown was just the first of many challenges. Bob wanted natural stone for the exterior of the house and scoured local quarries to find just the right kind. This is not a rock home. This is a stone home. And that's the, one of the characteristics that I wanted this house to be. Beautiful, but hard to work with. All the stone was mined out of the quarry and then split at the quarry using a guillotine. And then we brought the stone to the job and actually cut the stone on all four sides with diamond saws and laid it in cement with a dry look. Very tedious, laborious process. The mason has never really put stone up that way. I have never put stone up that way, but it's, I mean, as you can see, it's kind of a remarkable look. Remarkable is just what the new homeowners wanted. And to get it, they asked architect David Jamison to work closely with them, forging their ideas into the home's design. They were looking for something that was uh, significantly more modern than most of the houses in this neighborhood, but at the same point was yet familiar. Because of the small scaled site, Jameson had to find a way to make the house feel bigger. The solution, a design that used height and light. David, even though this room is very tall, it doesn't feel overly grand. It feels very proportional, kind of cozy. Right, the idea with the project was to take a room that is quite large in footprint, 22 feet by 26 feet, and really expand it vertically. The most dramatic use of vertical space is in the living room with a 22-foot vaulted ceiling and a spectacular stone fireplace. I thought that the house needed a vertical element to interrupt or, or punch through the limestone paneling, and we felt that the stone-clad fireplace was an excellent opportunity to do that. Skylights that use indirect natural light and dramatic windows will invite changing light into the home and something more. And this house is really set up to create a dialogue with the landscape itself and extend views into areas that are not necessarily part of the site. On the second floor, a bridge will lead to Bob's office. It's going to be a mix of monitors and computers, all wired for sound, data, and any other thing imaginable. I think there are 10 miles of wire in this home. I don't know where it all goes. I'm not even sure where it's going to come from. The house will be high-tech and health-conscious. Gabe Nasser made sure to address the homeowner's concerns about building a healthy home. Mold, mildew, termites, dust spores, uh, all those issues are important uh, to us and to the owner. Insulation really helps because it makes the house very tight. So we want to keep the house dry, tight, and clean. Bob and Barbara opted to heat and cool the house using geothermal energy, a source which taps into the Earth's core temperature and converts it by using a system of water-based pumps. The geothermal heat pumps are very clean. They're not using a fuel like natural gas. It's not cheap going in, but over the life of the system, it's definitely cost-effective. 
Bob and Barbara wanted a home that is beautiful and practical, a home for a lifetime. The design of the house takes into account the uh, fact that everyone begins to uh, age and need special design elements in order to move through the house. To that end, the major living spaces were placed on one level with ample hallways. An elevator will attach the basement and upper floors, and each bedroom is a self-contained suite, just the way Bob and Barbara envision it. It's nice to see the structure go up. It's nice to see how, it, how I imagine it's going to look. Probably looks as exciting now as it will ever look just because you see the structure work and you see what forms a house like this. Well, um, it's been very intense. I think anybody who is, you know, when you start a project like this, everyone tells you it'll be very stressful, it'll be very difficult. You don't believe them, it's true. In the meantime, they wait, patiently, knowing that soon their dream home will be everything they wanted and more.